Yo, Chuck. Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna go over how to make a tile map, which is like a map. It's a grid form that's used to make games with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a canvas element. And to make a canvas element, you need to assign it a height, width, and ID. So I'm gonna do that. Let's make it 400 by 400. And then the ID, I'll just say game. So that's our canvas element. That's all the HTML we're gonna to need to do for this tutorial. I'm gonna save that. And you can see I just have just a boilerplate HTML template. And I have a script tag right here that's referencing index.js and then a style sheet referencing style.css. I have both of those files on the left-hand side here. So now we've got this canvas element made. I can come into my JavaScript and make a variable call it canvas and I'll just select that canvas using document .get element by ID and we called it game I believe yeah that's right memory of goldfish okay so we called it game and then now we need to create a canvas context and the canvas context basically gives you access to the canvas API so let's make another variable called context and I'm gonna say canvas.getContext and pass in 2D because our game would be 2D in this instance. So like I said, this right here will give you access to the Canvas API. All right, with all that aside, now we need to, on load of the window, we need to perform some type of function. So we'll say window on load, we're gonna do some type of function. Now, since this is a canvas game, you usually want to constantly update your canvas. So let's make a function called update all. And this function is going to use the window.request animation frame and call itself. So basically what request animation frame does is it can makes a continuous loop so your game can constantly be refreshed and elements on the screen can constantly be refreshed and basically it allows for like movement and updating of the canvas. So on load, we're not doing any type of uh, function yet. So I want to call window.request animation frame and then pass in update all. So basically what's gonna happen now is the, the program's gonna load. When it finishes loading everything, it's gonna call this window request animation frame update all. And then when you go into the update all function, it's just gonna ca call the request animation frame on itself and this will loop continuously. And I can show you that if I was a console.log, we'll just say game is running. So let's do a preview of that. I come in here and inspect on my console. You can see it's just calling that game is running. The update all function is just triggered and firing continuously. So that's so that's good. So now we're in a continuous loop and we're able to update our game. So now we can make some global constants. Let's say tile width equals 40. Let's say tile height equals 40. And then we want our grid to be 10 by 10. So we'll say const grid rows equal 10. And then const grid calls equal 10. All right, so the way a tile map works is you basically make an array. So let's make an array called map. And like I said, it's gonna be a 10 by 10 with tiles of 40 pixels by 40 pixels. But to actually make the map, you just want to pass in uh, array values of zero or one for this instance, because zero is gonna be like blocks or like rocks that the player can't pass through. And then one will be like a road or like some type of element where you can walk through. So you gotta visualize, I'm just gonna make these roads and blocks using ones and zeros. So zeros will be the blocks, one will be the roads. So it's gonna be 10 by 10, so I'm gonna say, just for starters, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I've got 10 zeros. And now I'm going to paste this 10 times, or 9 times. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's our 10 by 10, but it's all blocks or rocks right now. So we need to make some pathways in this map. So I'm just going to come in here. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's all subjective, obviously. But you're just making some type of cool pathway that you would like your player to be able to walk through in your game. And that, those are the ones, right? Okay, one, 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 like that. And then you might have some areas where the player can just walk off to that are meaningless and just kind of distractions really. So I'm doing that now. Notice too that I've disabled prettier or other text extensions that might format the text to make it look nicer. That's because if you do have those extensions, this map will be reformatted and it's hard to visualize. So I like to do it like this. Okay, so we've We've created this map with elements that are impassable, the zeros, and the elements the player can walk through, the ones. So now we need to update this map. So, or draw it onto the, the canvas, I should say. So I'll say const draw map, make a function. And the best way to do this is to make two for loops where you have the for loop of the rows. So the rows are gonna be the vertical the one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So the vertical, those are rows. And the columns are gonna be the across. So like one, two, three, four, five. Like those are the columns, right? So you're gonna come in here and make a for loop. Let's call it row and set it to zero. And then you're gonna say, well, each row is less than grid rows. We're gonna increment each row. Inside of this for loop, we're going to make another for loop, and we'll call it each column equals zero. And each column is less than grid calls. We want to increment each column, like that. So now we are looping through this data, um, but we need a way to select individual elements in each row, in each column. So let's make a variable called the rate index, and that's gonna be equal to each row, because remember the rows are the vertical. This is a row, this is a row, this is a row, and so on. So each row times grid rows, so that's gonna be all 10 of these elements, all 10 of these elements, all 10 of these elements, and then plus each call. So what this does is it allows us to select individual elements or you like look through individual elements in this array. So if you imagine you're on the first row, that actually starts at zero. So you're gonna, if you did each row times uh, grid rows, that would be zero. And then you would just add whatever column you're on and then that would give you your value and then so on, right? So, so now we have this index that's gonna loop through each element in this array and it's gonna check, is it a one or is it a zero? So we need to say if map at index, array index, what we found, right? Then we want to do something, all right? So if, it's, if it equals one, do something, else do something else right so here's where we're actually going to draw shapes on the canvas so if it's a if it's a one i want it to be like a light colored square to indicate that you can move through that square and if it's a zero then i want it to be black because then it's like a rock or like some obstacle the player cannot move through so i'm going to come in here and say uh rect fill which is a canvas uh function you're gonna call it on your context, right? And then it takes a value of x, y, width, and height, okay? So our x value, that's like where it's positioned on the x axis. It needs to be our tile width times our column, right? 
So why am I doing this? So each time you go across, because this is gonna be how far we are from X, and if you want your tiles to stack symmetrically or horizontally, you need to space them accordingly. And notice that the, the column is gonna increment from zero to one to so-and-so up until 10. And it's gonna basically allow our elements here to be evenly spaced horizontally, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my Y value, except this time I'm gonna pass in tile height times each row. And now what this is gonna do is the same thing. So when I'm vertically uh, making my tiles, I'm going to count downwards and it's gonna space them evenly downwards, all right? It's kind of confusing to visualize, but just know that if you didn't do this, if you didn't do this little times magic, then all of your tiles will be stacked on top of each other and it would be unusable. So that's why I'm doing this logic right here. And then now we need to specify a width and a height, which we've already said. We have a tile width and then a tile height. And before I uh, fill these items, let's make a fill style. This is gonna be the color of the block. So I'll say light gray. Okay, and then if it's not a one, we wanna make it black. So, if I call this draw function now on our update all, it should make a map, but let's see if I mess it up somewhere. Rect fill, um, so it should be, is it fill rect? Yeah, it's fill rect, my bad. Dyslexia kicking in, sorry. Okay, cool, so there's our map. You can see the zeros, just like in the map array, right here are the black blocks that we can, the player won't be able to pass through. And then the light gray is the area which the player will be able to pass through. So it's not too complicated. I think the main difficulty is gonna be with visualizing the map and then also visualizing this uh, row grid uh, <laughs> madness going on here. But um, once you kind of work through this a couple times, it starts to make more sense. So if you don't get it right away, I wouldn't be too worried. But that is how you make a tile map in JavaScript using Canvas. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one.